My name is Thomas Wagner. I'm the Cryosphere Program Scientist at NASA Headquarters. When I was a kid, I was always into science, you know, and it was everything from mixing up chemistry sets to like looking at bees' wings through a microscope. You know, did I want to be an astronaut? Sure, but I kind of, I was never really sure how my science career was going to play out. But you know, in the pinball machine of life, I eventually wound up at NASA. So a few years ago, I was working at the National Science Foundation in the Antarctic Earth Sciences Program, which was a lot of fun because we did everything from dinosaurs to volcanoes, but also to the big ice sheets and how they contribute to sea level rise. And I got more and more interested in global climate change, and I got more interested in particular the sea level rise question because there was a lot of interplay between geology and also glaciology. And then when the job opened up at NASA to kind of combine everything and also to look at the whole Earth as a system, it was a really natural fit and it was something I really wanted. Wanted. One thing people don't realize is that Earth science has been fundamental NASA since it was formed back in the 1950s. The simple thing is this, if you want to understand the Earth, you need to look at it all over the place at the same time. And satellites are really one of the best ways to do that. There are loads of scientists out there working on climate change that you would never hear of, and it's everything from entomologists that are looking at how bugs are changing their distributions on the planet, through to people out there working every day trying to combat the flooding that's happened in places like Miami. So there's a whole, one thing to understand is that there's a whole bunch of people working on these questions from the actual like applications, like what are the impacts to coastal cities today, through to big pictures models of the earth and trying to figure out where we're going. One of the things that I think back to when I was growing up in the 70s was I had this science kit um, and it covered a whole bunch of different kinds of science but one of the striking pictures was there was a big word that said ecology and there was like a picture of a bird that had oil on it kind of thing. And I realized that when I grew up a lot of what we learned about in school was to try to understand nature as a system and man's impact on that and that hey, we had a lot of impact on nature in the 50s and 60s that maybe wasn't so good. Um, What's changed today, though, is that you know, the science has moved on a lot, and we actually understand a lot about how the Earth works, and we also understand things like as we put CO2 in the atmosphere, it's warming the planet up. And I think educators can play a primary role in really letting kids understand how their actions impact the world. What I'm hopeful for is that two things really happen in the next 50 years. One is that we start grappling with the climate change that's occurring now. And I think one thing people have to realize, the planet isn't just changing, it's changed. And we need to start getting on top of that and thinking about things like, how are our coastal areas going to change as sea levels rise? What's going to happen to our food sources as things like the oceans become more acidic? What's going to happen to our water resources as temperatures change? And we need to really put that into our planning. And then the other thing is that I hope we make headway on the long-term questions of climate change and how we reduce our reliance on fossil fuels and really blunt the big impacts of warming in the long term. One thing that I don't think people realize is how energy sets everything in our lives. It's not just heating our houses and providing light, it's also how we generate our food. And so as we kind of move forward on this planet and we all work together, we need to find ways to generate the energy we need to really improve our lives. But we need to do it in a way that can help sustain the planet as an abode for life. 